So I will be presenting this, uh, this work that is joined with uh, my colleague Luis Felipe Lopez Calva, who recently just moved to UNDP in New York, uh, also with Professor Nora Lustig from Tulane University and Daniel Valderrama from uh, Georgetown University. And the, the, the main idea was of this uh, study was to be a background paper to a recent uh, regional study we did at the World Bank on wage inequality. And uh, this paper focused mostly on uh, some stylized facts to, to provide some context to that study. Uh, later on, I will, I will go over a few uh, points that we didn't do in the, in the, uh, in the study, but uh, we focus mostly on some equilibrium results in terms of uh, earnings as, as the result of the dynamics between supply, demand, and institutional factors in the labor market in Latin American countries. So some context of income inequality in Latin America. Um, this is kind of data, uh, some, it's all data, but just in general, uh, when we divide the world in terms of the um, geographical areas as the World Bank does, um, the growth, the analyzed income growth of the bottom two quintiles of the income distribution uh, grew the largest with respect to the other uh, regions uh, globally. And particularly that ratio of the growth rates of the bottom 40% was the, uh, almost twice as the mean average incomes when looking at household income data, uh, how, uh, which certainly, as you can imagine, translated into a steady decline in the uh, income inequality. And, and the topic of total income inequality actually has been uh, widely studied in, in a region like Latin America by colleagues in the Universidad de La Plata, Sedlas, uh, Leonardo Gasparini, Guillermo Cruces, also by Nora Lustig and Lopez Calva, uh, some World Bank and Inter-American Development Bank studies, and uh, Cornea, and others. So, depending on whether you believe in some sort of uh, averages of, of genies, uh, there has been a significant decline that has been reported since 2003 in, uh, across the region, uh, either if you have unweighted or population-weighted uh, uh, averages of genies. We also have another diagram that includes if you pull all the micro data from household surveys, yeah, you more or less get the same, the same uh, graph for Latin America. And Nora had some issues putting that one together because it will be like the Gini coefficient of all Latin Americans. Uh, but that, I think that one is in, in the paper. Uh, but still, even if Latin America experienced such an important decline in, in total income inequality, um, it still remains as the second most unequal region in the world, just behind Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, this graph shows the benchmarking of inequality in Latin America with respect to other developing regions. It's quite challenging because Latin America mostly uh, measures welfare with income information, and other regions typically use consumption information, but we uh, borrow some uh, factors of conversion from Alvaredo and Gasparini from the Handbook of Labor, uh, on, 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 of inequality, and we end up with this comparison in which Latin America certainly is far away from uh, the most equal region in, uh, in the world, that is Europe and Central, Central Asia. So what is behind this recent trend in declining inequality in Latin America? So when you use a sort of non-parametric decomposition to understand those declines, there is not a clear trend in the early 90s from uh, early 2000s in terms of uh, those trends. I mean, few countries experience uh, small declines in total income inequality, others experience an increase in total, uh, uh, total income inequality. But if you really look at the second panel that was from early 2000s to 2011, 2013, uh, in all countries, both in Costa Rica, from the 17 countries we have in the SEDLAC database that we use, uh, experience a decline in the total income inequality. And when you decompose what are the factors that explain such a decline, if you look at the blue bar, that blue bar actually uh, tell, tells us the contribution of labor uh, incomes, and the white bar tells the contribution of the quantities of labor in terms of demographics and the new entrants into the labor markets. And certainly the social protection uh, and remittances have some additional uh, relevance in terms of such a decline, that is this gray bar. But overall, the message here is like, just with the exception of Costa Rica, 
all other countries in Latin America experience a decline since to, uh, in total income inequality in Latin America, and it has been reported in previous studies. But the, the, then the issue here from the previous graph really is that there has been a substantial uh, and statistically significant decline on earn, and earnings inequality in Latin America starting around 2002-2003, which when you use some sort of comparable data from ILO uh, Global Wage Report, you find out that for non-Latin American countries, the, uh, the, there has been uh, certainly uh, movements in both directions, but there is not a, a, a trend that compares to what happened in Latin America. Um, given that this, uh, uh, this panel is also to compare other middle-income countries, we try to use this global uh, wage index from ILO to include other countries, high-income high and high-middle-income countries into the, um, in this graph. And we have two panels, basically the panel in the top tells us the differences between, uh, in, in the y, y axis, we have the annualized change in labor uh, earnings uh, measured by the Gini coefficient, and the x axis is the labor earnings Gini. In the top panel is in the uh, decade of the 90s, the, the panel in the bottom is in the decade of the 2000s. And as you can see, uh, all these blue bubbles represent Latin American countries which departed for a high levels of labor income inequality, and even though there were some de uh, significant declines in the, in, the, in the first decade of the 2000s, uh, still the levels of, uh, of, of, of labor earnings inequality is high with respect to other countries in the world. But uh, getting to what explains this uh, success story, so the contribution of this story is that different to other uh, uh, literature that has been uh, thinking about this before, uh, we have a more comprehensive uh, approach. Uh, what has other, uh, what have been done in other studies is focusing a little bit on the uh, fall in the education premium. Some papers by Manacorda and others, and Gasparini and Cornia, they, they focus uh, particularly on the uh, skill premium. And uh, there is a lot of country studies, again, also focusing on this type of price effects, the changes in the skill premium for Mexico, Chile, Panama, and several set of uh, Latin American countries. More recently, uh, Messina and Fernandez apply, applied a, a broader framework also to understand the effects of uh, experience premium in Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. And uh, we really are closer to a paper by Acevedo and others, but in that paper they have a non-parametric approach of the compositions, and we, one which we, we try to do is to follow more uh, a framework from, for, for, from those of you who are familiar with uh, the work by Outdoor and Katz in the, in the US, we try to follow that framework for, for, the, for the analysis of earnings inequality in Latin America. So the contribution of this study, we believe, is that we try to get a little bit uh, more into the details of the main determinants of labor income inequality. Uh, and to a lesser extent, we try to contrast this in the paper with the trends uh, with other middle-income and high-income countries. Um, and uh, we present some stylized facts in terms of which percentage of such uh, variance in earnings inequality we can explain from observables, skills, experience, gender, urban, rural residents. And uh, we also trying to be explain which part of that we are not able to explain with the data we have. And, uh, the, the importance of all of these studies is that we have a regional approach with these 17 countries in the SEDLAC data that I understand Gary's book also used, the SEDLAC data for, that covers more than 90% of the total population in the region. And we take also a long-term perspective, departing from the early 90s, um, and actually the last version of the paper we tried to update it up, up to 2016. So, if I don't have time to go in detail with the illustrations of each one of our main results, uh, here's an overview of, uh, of, of our findings. The main one is that, as shown before, uh, there is evidence of this trend reversal in labor income inequality after 2002 uh, for 16 out of the 17 countries we have data for, uh, which is supported first by a substantial expansion in the real hourly earnings at the bottom of the distribution. Secondly, uh, through a steady decline in the education premium, uh, driven by a larger growth in labor earnings among the uh, unskilled and low-skilled 
relatively to those with high school and college education. Also, we find, and this is an, an, a new result, and it's part of the contribution of the study, and a steady fall in the experience premium, um, in which most experienced workers have seen a reduction in almost half of, uh, of their premium with respect to younger workers. On this one, we don't have a, an explanation of the channels, but uh, some hypothesis this has to do with skills obsolescence and other things related to demand. I, I think Santiago Levy and, and Felipe also had this uh, study in, 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 in Latin America in which they show uh, that uh, there are a lot of demand factors that might be explaining why, uh, why uh, we observe this decline in education premium and possible experience premium by not creating uh, enough good jobs. Also, uh, we find small effects in the gender wage gap uh, and uh, we find a substan uh, substantial effect in the urban rural earnings gap which declined uh, during the 2000s which is correlated with this the period in Latin America with the, called the commodity boom in which uh, was high, uh, higher terms of trade particularly for South America. And then we find that there is a key role of unobservables in, the, in, in, in such a wage uh, uh, trends in wage inequality which unfortunately with the data we have we cannot we cannot uh, explain, but uh, this is are typically associated with um, efforts or with soft skills and with other information we typically don't have in this labor force service. So the framework we use is the one from Katz, uh, Autor and Katz, and Lemieux, and Katz, Kearney, and, and, uh, and Autor, in which basically we try to go through uh, uh, unpacking the effects and the drivers of uh, earnings inequality uh, through the observables and also try to have a, uh, something to say in terms of the unobservables. And in general, as I mentioned before, some of the shortcomings of this paper is that we really don't get into the mechanisms at play that explains those, uh, uh, those effects through the education premium, experience premium, and so on. About the other background papers of this regional study on wage inequality actually uh, discuss some of these effects in terms of relative supplies for uh, the effects on, uh, uh, I mean, this idea of the paradox, paradox of progress in which you have more educated people uh, uh, joining the, uh, the, the, the labor market and then there is, if there is not enough labor demand responding to such an increase in, in, in relative supplies that actually compare, compare, uh, reduces the uh, the, um, the, the wage premium at the top of the skill distribution. Also, there are a few background papers dealing with topics related to uh, minimum wages, which are relatively high in Brazil and Colombia, and unionization factors and so on. But those are beyond of this study, so I, I will not have a response for those type of uh, questions. Uh, so what we do, some by basic definitions of uh, the data and, uh, and what the assumptions of this study, we just run very basic mean serial equations uh, in a semi-parametric semi way in which we define uh, multiple domain specific specifications for the following uh, early earnings of the main occupation of full-time workers between 15 and 65 years of age. Second, education is defined in three categories, uh, college, high school, and primary education. Experience refers to potential experience, which is a drawback from the data we have, but is, we believe it's a good proxy for experience that typically is your age minus six minus uh, the years of education. And we divide that in five groups, zero to five, up to more than 31 uh, years of experience. And then gender and urban are defined as uh, collected in the survey. And then we assume that uh, this function on the mean series is a linear function, so uh, we can uh, talk about each result as the response to workers' characteristics di directly. So a few of you probably saw this graph also in this outdoor and cuts paper for the US, but just uh, flip in the sense that in Latin America, what we observe is that in the early uh, period of the 90s up to 2003, 2004, uh, there is some sort of a stagnation of earnings. It doesn't matter in which part of the earnings distribution you were, either in the bottom 10%, 90%, in the median. And there was not a lot of movements on, 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 on real uh, early earnings. But after that, and maybe associated to the commodity boom in terms of trade in South America, uh, there was a, 
uh, and, and effect in which uh, the, the bottom part of the earnings grew, uh, grew more than the top part of the earnings distribution. And this is, was mostly driven by what happened in South America, that again are the countries that experience better uh, results in terms of, uh, terms of trade, driven again by the higher demand of commodities by ch China, India, and so on. And this is what happened in Central America and Mexico. Really, there, were not, there was not a lot of movements in earnings, if any. Uh, there were like some uh, uh, negative shocks that affected that, certainly the issues of crime and violence in Central America and migration to the U.S., and then the global financial crisis that affected a lot of Mexico, particularly the top part of the earnings distribution, like the percentile 90. This is more or less how the growth in, the growth in scope looks for earnings in which uh, it was somewhat unequalizing in the, in the, in the first period and, and, and very progressive in the second period. And now moving into the second uh, main result, that is the, the education premium. Uh, in general, uh, the ratios of uh, and the gray line is either the differences in, 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 in which ratios either observe or the results of the Minserian equation. It doesn't matter, but in general, there was a decline of about 25% in the education premium between college and primary, and, in the, and, and in the, I believe also in the education premium between um, um, high school and primary. That is reflected in this wage index uh, um, for high school and college with respect to primary, primary school. This is just to show the, the strong association that exists between the decline in labor income inequality and, and education premium. We try to include information from other countries, including Russia, from the Russia Longitudinal Monitoring Surveys, from South Africa, from Turkey, and from the US. Hopefully, Harun can tell us what happened with South Africa. That is a big outlier here in which there was an increase in earnings inequality while a decline in the education premium. So. And that one I don't know much. This is one of the most interesting results of the paper, that is the one related to the experience premium, in which uh, if we really go from the early 90s, uh, there has been a reduction of almost in half on the experience premium it uh, with respect to the benchmark zero to five years of experience with respect to a, a, every other uh, levels of experience premium. Fortunately, we don't provide a, an explanation of what is happening here. There is some uh, hypothesis related to automation, related to these routine, manual, and abstract uh, tasks, and so on, but we had not been able to respond to this. Let me move uh, quickly into the results for the gender gap and the urban-rural gap. Um, the gender gap actually uh, was cut in Latin America in the previous period, and certainly a, a little bit more in the second period of analysis, while the, there was a significant decline in the uh, urban-rural uh, earnings gap. Uh, uh, there is a very good paper by Leo Gasparini in Argentina presenting precisely this urban-rural gap uh, and associating this to the commodity boom and, uh, 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 and how that benefited earnings in, in rural areas. Finally, uh, the topic related to the, the role of unobservables in, in the data to explain these the, which uh, variation. So basically, it doesn't matter uh, basically the period. We can only explain about 30% of, 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 of wage inequality with information on education, experience, uh, gender, and, and, and location. And one of our colleagues at the bank, through a more sophisticated, well, not sophisticated, but a, a more complete model in which included interactions in all these characteristics and uh, even sector of, of activity and occupation, and the most she could get out of uh, observables was about 50% of, uh, of the explanation, which really leaves us still a, an important task to understand uh, which are the other factors that explain uh, these declining wage inequality. This is the summary of results. The, the relevant uh, columns are the last two, which present uh, the decline in each one of these relative returns, either in education, potential experience, gender, and area of residence. And if, if, if what we can observe is that the annual growth rate has been negative, which is associated with the decline in labor in earnings. And particularly, this, the last column is the one in which in, since 2003, uh, such a decline has been uh, 
uh, larger. So just as a matter of conclusion, again, we believe our main result is the one related to uh, experience, uh, the, the experience premium, which we certainly would like to explore further. Uh, and also, as uh, I, I would like to invite you to take a look at the other background papers of the wage inequality report, which pre presents uh, country case studies with some uh, of these, uh, dealing with some of these channels through supply, demand, or institutional factors. And certainly there is a research agenda for us in terms of thinking how other factors such as soft skills, um, efforts, and, and, and others are also important in terms of uh, defining the changes in earnings inequality. Thank you.